All right, so we're going to do a few examples um, using double integrals to compute volumes um, in both rectangular and polar coordinates before moving on and, and looking at these same problems from the point of view of triple integrals. Um, so for this particular example here, um, before we can do anything, of course, we, we need to know what we're looking at. Um, so we want this uh, tetrahedron with these, with these four vertices, right? So a tetrahedron is sort of a, a three-dimensional analog of a, of a triangle. Um, we have something that looks like the following. Let's draw our coordinate system in. Let's mark off these vertices. So we have the origin. We have the point 2, 0, 0. We have the point 0, 4, 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And we have the point 0, 0, 1. Okay. So uh, the way you form the tetrahedron is you join, you put edges between all of the, all of the points. So one edge there, one edge there, one edge there. Okay? And now you can, you can probably get some idea of what this thing looks like. In fact, if we, if we color in this bit here, Right, you get some idea. So, so it's this sort of uh, this triangular object, right, with the four vertices, and you can play around a little bit. You can start identifying some of the sides, which, of course, might be helpful when we want to set up our integral. So we can think about well, what are the various sides? Well, okay. So of course, um, these three edges here are just the coordinate axes. Um, we have one face of the tetrahedron which lies in the xy plane. So we have our usual x, y, z labeling of the coordinate axes. Um, so this line here, it goes what? It goes between um, 2, 0, 0, and 0, 4, 0. Um, and we want the equation of the line that goes between them. Um, so this is going to be what is this going to be? This is going to be um, y is equal to, um, let's see, I believe it will be 4 minus 4x. Let's see. What do we have here? 2, 0, 0. When x is equal to 2, I want y to be 0. So 4 minus 2x, right? Yeah, so when x is 0, uh, we're here along the y-axis, y is equal to 4. When x is equal to 2, y is equal to 0. So this is as it should be. And, and of course, uh, this is in the xy plane, so z equals 0 along there. Um, we could also introduce the, uh, the equations for the other lines if we wanted to. Right? So along here, for example, um, we would have... <coughs> um, we would write this if you like. We could do z in terms of y. We can do y in terms of z. It's really up to you how you want to do it. Um, let's think of it as, uh, let's say, we'll do it this way. Um, z is equal to 1 minus 1 quarter y. You could do it that way if you like. Um, OK, and we could label the other, the other edge as well, but it's not actually that important. Um, what is important is if we're setting this up as a, as a double integral, we want to compute volume as a double integral. Well, then, what do we know how to do? We know how to do volume under a graph, right? Above a, above a region and under a graph. So what should be our region and our graph in this case? Well, we can think about this region down here in the xy plane, right? So we can think of, and then we have this face of the tetrahedron here, right? This, this main face, this one which we might kind of pencil in like so. All right. That is, uh, that is the graph of a function. All right. This is a, it's a plane. So we're going to write down the equation for that plane, and we're going to think of that plane as a graph sitting over this triangular region in the xy plane. So this region, right, and the reason why it was worthwhile finding that equation is now we know that we can do this. We can draw this line 
y is equal to 4 minus 2x, x going from 0 to 2. And we can think of that as our region D in the xy plane. It's this triangle down here, right? And so we can see from this, uh, from this picture that we can describe this region as, well, x goes from, from 0 to 2. And for each x value between 0 and 2, our y values, they start here at 0. They go up until they hit the line. So y is between 0 and 4 minus 2x. Okay, so now we have to come up with, uh, with an equation of the plane. So how do, we get, how do we get an equation for this plane? Um, there's a few ways to do this. Um, one way to think about it is, well, if I rearrange this equation here, this says that 2x plus y is equal to 4. Um, this one I could rearrange to say... 1 quarter y plus z is equal to 1. If I multiply through by 4, this is y plus 4z equals 4. Okay. And, and you might suspect that, well, okay, so here we have x equals 0. Here we have z equals 0. And you say, what if I... What if I kind of put the two together? You notice the kind of the y and the four, these, these bits that they have in common. So a, a good guess for the equation of this plane might be to just say, let's take 2x plus y from here, and then y, which we have, plus 4z. And we might reasonably expect that that should come out to be 4. Okay, so does it work? Well, let's see. Um, I know I have the right equation for my plane if, well these three points, right? This point is not on the plane, that's kind of the back of the tetrahedron. But the other three um, vertices for my tetrahedron are all points on this plane. So we check, do they all satisfy the equation? They do. I've got the right equation for the plane. Um, now, if I want to think of this as the graph where I'm writing z as a function of x and y, and I'm thinking of the graph over this region d in the plane, well, then I need to solve for z here. So z is going to be, well, let's move this stuff over to the other side. Um, it's going to be, and I've got to divide everything by 4, right? So it's going to be 1 minus 1 half x minus 1 quarter y. And that's my f of x, y. Very good. All right, so from here I can set things up, right? I can set up my integral. I can calculate the volume. Uh, we may not go through all the, the final details of the calculation. I'll leave those to you just so that the, the video doesn't run too long. But the, the hard part, of course, is the setup. So what does the volume look like as a double integral uh, with respect to x and y? Well, over here, we see that we should have x going from 0 to 2. We should have y going from 0 to 4 minus 2x. And we should have our function, f of x, y, which is 1 minus 1 half x minus 1 quarter y. And we're going to integrate first with respect to y and then with respect to x. And then we'll have the volume. Okay? Um, so this is, a, this is a reasonably straightforward integral to carry out. Maybe I'll, I'll do the first, the inner integral and the iterated integral just so we can we can get down to the point where it's a, it's a simple calc 1 integral that I feel confident leaving you all with. Um, so let's see. We're going to have, we're integrating with respect to y. So the antiderivative for 1 is just y. Uh, half x, the antiderivative is half x y. And then here I'm going to get 1 over, so a half times a quarter is 1 over 8 uh, y squared. And we're going from 0 to 4 minus 2x. So let's plug in the limits and leave it at that. We have 4 minus 2x minus 1 half x times 4 minus 2x minus 1 over 8 
times 4 minus 2x all squared. And you need to integrate that with respect to x. So of course, if you wanted to do this, uh, probably the right approach is to clean things up, simplify, right? I think, I mean, I think that's going to be easier than doing a substitution. Maybe there's a temptation to substitute the 4 minus 2x, but I think you're probably going to have an easier time just expanding these out, simplifying, integrating term by term, you'll get your answer. Okay, so that's not so bad, right? Uh, one of the things that you might notice is that, you know, this particular object here, there, there's no real reason to prefer z over, over x or y in terms of which one we treat as the dependent variable, right? We chose to solve for z. Um, you might have looked at this equation for the plane here and said, well, you know what, actually, it, it would be a lot more convenient in some ways to treat y as my dependent variable, right? Um, because it's easier to solve for y, I don't have to divide by 4. So you might have said, hey, why don't, I, why don't I do that? Why don't I think of treating y as, you know, 4 minus 2x minus 4z. Slightly easier arithmetic. And you say, okay, well, if I'm, if I'm treating y now um, as a function of x and z, well, then I'd actually have to integrate not over this region here, right, because now I'm treating y as the dependent variable, so I have to rotate my point of view so that this is kind of the, the axis I'm looking at, and I think of this plane here as sitting over this triangular region in the xz plane. Um, so you can, and you can certainly set it up that way. So we could choose to, you know, we'd have to work out the equation of this line, set up this triangular region in the xz plane, we've got y as a function of x and z, and, and we could set up the integral that way. So we'd, we'd be integrating with respect to um, x and z rather than x and y. There's no reason why you can't do that. Um, and, of course, the other way to think about this is if you're doing volume, in some ways what you're really doing is you're, you're doing a, a triple integral. Um, we could have thought of this because we're going to get there right away. Um, we could have thought of this as, in fact, the following integral, 0 to 2, 0 to 4 minus 2x, 0 to 1 minus half x minus 1 quarter y dz dy uh, dx. We can think of this triple integral, and we could do it that way as well. And one of the things that we'll talk about when we get into triple integrals in more detail is that just like with double integrals, you can change the order of integration, right? You could choose to integrate first with respect to y and then x and then z, for example. And what you're doing when you're changing that order of integration, one way to think about it is you're, you're kind of changing up, you know, the one that, the variable that comes first is kind of the one, if you're going to convert to a double integral, that variable that comes first is the one that you're thinking of as the dependent variable, right? You're thinking of that surface as, as a graph where you're writing that variable with respect to the other two. Um, often you can do this. Other triple integrals might be a little bit more complicated and you might have to be uh, a little more careful. All right, uh, we're going to do one more example with volume. Then I'm going to actually formally introduce triple integrals and we'll move on from there.